Hello, my name is Christina Duff. I'm the Senior Planner at Jefferson County Open Space and the Project Manager of the South Table Mountain Park Plan and 2020 Actions. I am here to receive any comments or questions about the information shared during this presentation. During this presentation, I will provide an overview of Jeffco Open Space's Vision to Action Framework, provide background on the history of South Table Mountain, describe some of the natural resources at the park, review the draft trails plan process, discuss our visitor information and management efforts, note some upcoming volunteer opportunities, and outline next steps in this process. As part of the Vision to Action Framework, Jeffco Open Space is not only updating our five-year strategic plan, known as the Conservation Green Print, but we're also building a new park plan framework. Please stay tuned for upcoming public engagement on this organization-wide effort. During this presentation, we will be focusing on the park plan level specifically for South Table Mountain Park. Within our park planning structure, there are five components, natural resources, park and heritage resources, trails, visitor information and management, and access and trailheads. During park planning, these components may be addressed one by one or in a group based on the need or condition of a park. This approach allows us to be more flexible and responsive to issues and opportunities as they arise. When we consider our three-part mission of preserve, protect, and provide, and a needed closure for raptor protection in South Table Mountain, we evaluated the specific park plan components that needed to be addressed first, natural resources, trails, and visitor information and management. At this time, we are still evaluating options for the trailhead component of the park, and Camp George West remains the sole official trailhead for South Table Mountain. Any activities related to the park and heritage resources and access and trailheads components will have a similar community engagement process. Jefferson County Open Space began acquiring land for this park in 1977 with a vision to protect the Mesa Top. Land was then acquired in a series of transactions, which I will describe in the following maps. In this map, you will see the general outline of the park as it exists today, with the topography of the Mesa Top visible in the background. In 1977, Open Space acquired the first portion of the park, about 84 acres on the east side of the Mesa Top. As you will see, there were a series of acquisitions over time of various sizes to bring the park together. In 1995, we acquired 0 0.07 acres in one transaction. In 1999, Open Space successfully negotiated a series of conservation easements and a trail easement with private and public agencies. We also acquired the land from the state for Camp George West at that time, which is the current location of the park's trailhead. In 2002, we acquired a 25-acre parcel along the south side of the Mesa along Quaker Street. In 2004, we acquired about 585 acres over a series of parcels from Coors Brewing Company across much of the western side of the Mesa. In 2005, we continued working with Coors to acquire another 150 acres along the northwest side of the Mesa. In 2016, we acquired strategic, those small parcels, to improve access opportunities for the neighborhoods to the east of the park. In 2018, we acquired ownership of the land under the XL power lines while the power company maintains access to these power lines through an easement. This map shows the current ownerships on the Mesa top. As you can see, there is still a mosaic of public and private owners. The land that is not affiliated with Jefferson County Open Space by ownership or easement is noted in purple. In this presentation, we will be discussing specific park plan components at South Table Mountain that will be addressed in 2020. Natural resources, trails, and visitor information and management. When we look at South Table Mountain, we will begin by discussing some of the rich natural resources at the park. As a conservation organization, we at Jefferson County Open Space are proud to report that golden eagles have been successfully nesting at South Table Mountain. Along with the bald eagle, the golden eagle is protected by three federal laws. The Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, and the Lacey Act. Therefore, in order to protect these nests, we follow Colorado Parks and Wildlife guidelines and federal guidelines. In addition to golden eagles, prairie falcons are also nesting at South Table Mountain. Understanding that South Table Mountain has long needed attention, regulations around raptor protection spurred the most recent work at the park, including seasonal closures, which were enacted following increased use of undesignated trails in the vicinity of the raptor nests. 
These regulations also led to an evaluation of the trail system and available visitor information. The golden eagle is a remarkable bird. Its average lifespan in the wild is 30 years. It ranges in size from 33 to 38 inches, weighs in at 6 to 15 pounds, with a wingspan of 6 to over 7 and a half feet. While these birds are quite fierce, their nests are very fragile. Humans can cause their nests to fail by looking down on them. What happens when nesting raptors are disturbed? Birds may abandon an occupied nest for minutes, hours, or completely. During that time, eggs and chicks can be damaged by excessive heat or cold. Fragile eggs and vulnerable chicks may be destroyed by nest predators, such as ravens, crows, or raccoons. Extreme weather, such as wind, hail, or late season snow and ice, also contribute to nest failure. Inexperienced parents may fail to attend to the nest properly. Direct and indirect human encroachment can contribute to nest failure. JCOS raptor closures help establish human disturbance-free buffers around active nest sites. Other park regulations, such as our drone ban, help protect nests from indirect human disturbance. Golden Eagle pairs maintain territories that may be as large as 60 square miles. They are monogamous and may remain with their mate for several years or possibly for life. Golden Eagles nest in high places, including cliffs, trees, or human structures, such as telephone poles. They build huge nests to which they may return for several breeding years. Females lay between one and four eggs, and both parents incubate them for 40 to 45 days. Typically, one or two young survive to fledge in about three months. The eagles at South Table Mountain are not migratory. They are resident eagles, and their nests are fascinating. According to Cornell's All About Birds website, Starting one to three months before egg laying, a golden eagle pair builds a nest of sticks and vegetation, sometimes also including bones, antlers, and human-made objects such as wire and fence posts. They line the nest with locally available vegetation, such as yucca, grasses, leaves, and lichens. They often include aromatic leaves, possibly to keep insect pests at bay. Resident birds continue adding nest material year-round, reusing the same nest for multiple seasons and sometimes alternating between two or more nests. Nests are huge, averaging some five to six feet width and two feet in height, enclosing a bowl of about three feet by two feet deep. The largest golden eagle nest on record was 20 feet tall and eight and a half feet wide. Within the park plan framework, the nesting golden eagles are included in the natural resources component. Additionally, this component considers potential human wildlife interactions in the park, such as with rattlesnakes, coyotes, or mountain lions, as well as stressors like invasive species and landscape fragmentation. These issues can be addressed in part through restoration efforts and increased awareness with our visitors, which we will cover in the trails and visitor information and management components of the park plan. Next, we will look at the trails system at South Table Mountain. Why do we designate trails? What are we trying to accomplish? JCOS is dedicated to habitat protection and providing healthy nature-based experiences. Designated trails strike a balance in offering sustainable, maintainable trail grades to curb soil erosion in a way that's sensitive to our natural resources. Designated trails are named and signed in the park, and they are included in our park maps. If a trail does not have a sign, it is undesignated. This is a current map that is posted at each kiosk around the park and is available online. This map will continue to be updated as more trail segments are completed. When we look at the park, the mesa top is a mosaic of public and private land. There are 7.1 miles of signed designated trails over 1,484 acres. There are 390 acres of private land, including the iconic Castle Rock. Access to the park is quite porous, with walk-in access at multiple points around much of the park perimeter, shown by the brown icons on the map. In addition to the 7.1 miles of designated signed trails at the park, South Table Mountain also has nearly 27 miles of undesignated trails within and neighboring the park, shown in purple on the map. Approximately 17.5 miles are on Jefferson County open space lands, which includes acreage we own, as well as acreage for which we hold conservation easements owned by agencies such as the state of Colorado, where the racetrack is located. There's also an estimated nine and a half miles of undesignated trails on private lands on the Mesa Top. These undesignated trails fragment habitat, encourage the spread of noxious weeds, 
are often unsustainable in design, causing erosion, they may be duplicative in the direction of travel, and they can lead visitors into unknowingly trespass onto private property. We also utilize the 2018 Community Trails proposal process to determine which of the trails proposed by the community might be formally adopted into the trail system. During the trails proposal process, we received 6.18 miles of suggested trail segments, of which 5.36 miles, or 13 alignments, qualified for further evaluation, shown on the brown lines on the map. The results of these efforts led to this draft trails plan map. This map shows an overlay of the existing trails in black, along with 8.5 miles of conceptual trails being added to the system. Again, the existing designated trails are named, mapped, and signed. The 8.5 conceptual miles include the adoption of 2.8 miles of undesignated trails into the system. Please note that these trail segments are still draft concepts and may be subject to change based on community feedback and access agreements with neighboring landowners. The trail density we are proposing at South Table Mountain is very similar to North Table Mountain, the other mesa within our park system. South Table Mountain has approximately 95 acres per trail mile, and North Table Mountain has approximately 117 acres per trail mile. Both parks also have seasonal trail closures due to raptor protection, Rimrock at North Table and Lava Loop at South Table. In order to address the undesignated trails in the park, we have begun a trail restoration effort to designate sustainable trails and rehabilitate unsustainable trails, helping to reduce habitat fragmentation and improve aesthetics and water quality. The steps we take in trail restoration include closing the trail, reseeding, enforcing the closure with ranger presence, and continuing long-term restoration efforts. Based on conditions on the ground, the Open Space Trails team, in partnership with volunteer groups, will complete trail work across the mesa top in a counterclockwise direction in 2020. Trail segments down the flanks of the mesa are anticipated to be completed in 2021. During this process, the trails team will also be closing and restoring undesignated trails that have not been adopted into the system. The trails team will begin construction on the mesa top this spring, beginning in the southwest side of the mesa. The first area of construction will be the dome flow and serpentine segments. Over the summer, the trails team will work on a trail connection to the golden ownership to the west. We began to formalize the Lava Loop Trail in the northern section of the park in January of 2020 in preparation for the closure for raptor protection that took effect on February 1st and will run through July 31st of this year. With the formalization of the trail and designation as Stay on Trail, our ranger team is better able to enforce the raptor closure to protect the golden eagles, their young, and their nest. Construction and improvements to the trail will resume in August once the seasonal closure is lifted. The trails team will also work on a potential connection to Rimrock Drive. By year end, the plan is for the trails team to work on connections on the east side of the park. Next, we will discuss our visitor information and management plan. Our goal in providing visitor information is to clearly communicate regulations, the experiences and designated trails in the park, and make our visitors aware of temporary conditions like wildlife closures. In order to better inform our visitors of our ongoing activities and park regulations, we have installed nine informational kiosks at all the locations where visitors are currently entering the park. Our promoted access points are marked with a P for parking sign or with a double arrow. Neighborhood access points such as on Rimrock Drive or the start of Lubon Trail off of Belvedere Drive have an information or eye icon. Resource protection is one of the three parts of the open space mission. While JCOS has a no collecting regulation in place across the park system, we want to highlight this regulation at South Table Mountain because of its rich paleontological and geologic resources. There are a few exceptions to this rule, such as scientific collection permits and two allowances specific to other parks. But when you visit South Table Mountain, please remember this regulation and leave any resources where you find them. In our most recent 2019 Community Engagement Survey for the Conservation Green Print, we received strong support for the Stay on Trail regulation. 87% of respondents want more trails that are sensitive to plants and wildlife, 
and 82% support regulations such as muddy trail closures and stay on trail. The stay on trail regulation keeps visitors off of private property and is vital for visitor safety, the protection of fragile plant species, the discouragement of undesignated trails, and the prevention of further fragmentation of wildlife habitat. As previously noted, Lava Loop will be designated a stay on trail once the raptor closure is lifted on August 1st. South Table Mountain is unique in that we plan to transition the management of the entire park to stay on trail once the trail system is finalized and the undesignated trails are restored. With the community support of this regulation, we are also considering stay on trail through the rest of our system. Thank you to all of our visitors who help protect our parks by following our park regulations. Again, we will be updating our kiosks around the park when the trail system construction is complete and as any rules or regulations are updated. If you're interested in supporting South Table Mountain, we have volunteer opportunities coming up specific to trail work. We are planning a volunteer event at the park for National Trails Day on June 6th. Please be advised that this date is subject to change. We're also starting up a land steward program for South Table Mountain in 2020. The land steward program provides a hands-on volunteer opportunity for individuals who are particularly passionate about South Table Mountain Park. South Table land stewards are advocates for the park through stewardship of the park landscape, promotion of JCOS rules and regulations, and the protection of natural and cultural resources within the park. Land stewards additionally serve as an on-the-ground source of information for upcoming park planning efforts. Land stewards have the opportunity to receive specialized training from Jefferson County Trails and Ranger staff while building a sense of community and camaraderie with like-minded volunteers. Please check out the volunteer section of our website for more information. The next steps within the South Table Mountain 2020 Park Plan are to evaluate any comments, questions, or concerns raised from this presentation and provide updates on our website as necessary. Please reach out to us at stm at jeffco.us. We will respond to questions and concerns through our website once the 30-day public comment period ends on April 29th. Regarding the construction timeline, we will rehabilitate unsustainable trails and improve and formalize additional trails during the 2020 field season. Finally, if you're interested in supporting South Table Mountain, please consider participating in our National Trails Day event at the park or training to become part of the Land Steward Program. Check out the volunteer section of our website for more information. Thank you for your interest in South Table Mountain Park.